Okay, now we're going to have a look at what it takes to make this thing nice and smooth. Smooth and easy and a lot more fun to shoot than uh, the one that comes out of the box. So here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll lay the gun right here. I tried to get my frame where it'll stay within that paper towel. Here are the nice springs that we're going to use. These springs, let's go ahead and lay this like that. This spring here is for the recoil. And let's see what else we got. Here is a spring. Let's see, I'll put it this way. That's going to be the recoil right there. Here is the spring for the trigger. That's going to do a little bit lighter weight on stage one and stage two. Make that trigger a whole lot nicer. That's about an eight pound. We want to take it down to about a three and a half, which will be good for a carry weight if I decide to make this an EDC everyday carry. Then we're going to also, inside here, we're going to change the spring that is for the hammer called the main spring. It's got both names. It is in the main spring housing. It is the main spring, but it operates the hammer, which you can't, he's covered up right now. And then the last spring is a little bitty guy, and he is going to be replacing the spring inside here which lets you hit your magazine release and opens it up, uh, makes it where you can get your mag in and out. So it's gonna make that job a lot easier also. So those are springs involved. I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in the spring bucket. And these all came from Wolf, except for this one. This one came from Evolutionary Gunworks, EGW. It's a nice stainless steel spring. And these don't come preset. You have to bend them to make them fit your needs. So let's go ahead and do a quick tear down on this gun. We're going to do a field strip. Real easy to do. Let's, uh, we've already checked it empty, so I'll put this, I'll have to have it up like that. And we'll pull that, pull that one out. Okay, so there's the first step. Put this guy aside. We're going to bring this to the rear. Got the hammer cock, make it a little easier. All you do here is you look for a little half moon cutout right there and make sure the tip of that slide stop is lined up and then push on the far side. There's a big knobby right there. That's the end of your the post of the slide stop. Push it up and out and we'll just lift it, grab it with some fingernails and hopefully it'll come out. There it goes. Lay it right there. And then we can take the slide off. Take the frame separate from the side. Notice how easy that goes if you go upside down. I've noticed that, learning some things here. And then we're going to take this out. This is the guide rod, military style guide rod for the recoil spring. So first step, the easiest one, take this spring right here and get it out of the picture. I'm not throwing it in the trash, but it's gonna go over here in a little tray and it's out of the picture. We'll go ahead and get our nice new Wolf recoil spring. Bring him into the picture. Now watch this. This is something you need to know when you're changing out a spring. These springs from Wolf will come, you got two ends to it. One end is a finished factory end. That means that they've turned it around where there's no coil showing. They cut it off and they've got it bound down where it's tight. There's nothing for it to get hung up. On the other end of the spring, it has a raw end that's been cut off with a machine, cut off, and it's not turned down tight. Uh, notice that this is a variable rate spring, meaning the coils are very close to each other here, and then a little less, and on this end, they're spread out a lot. So it gives you a different feel when you cock that gun, operate the slide on the gun. It'll feel a little stiff in the beginning, it just gets easier, easier, easier. It's just, it's an amazing thing how these work. It makes the gun operate a lot slicker too. So when you install this on your guide rod, it's very important that you put <coughs> the finished end of the spring on there. So the rough end is gonna go inside this cap. See, by doing it like that, the cut end that could get hung up on something inside the gun when it's operating is gonna be inside that cap and he's well protected and keeps him from misbehaving. So you put him in there, so you're gonna be in there. At this end, Usually, if it's a wolf spring, it won't slide on there because you want it to stay, part of the picture, you want it to stay together with that rod. So if you go to push, it won't go. If you turn the spring one way, it will act like it's just threading it. It's expanding that spring a little bit, and the next thing you know, 
it's as far as it can go and then you stop don't ever grab one of these springs like this and just try to pull it off of that off of that uh, little spring guide rod you don't want to pull it off there because you will expand your spring you ruin your spring so when you take it off turn it one way or the other and see which way feels softer see as I'm turning it clockwise now it expands the spring and I can take it off without hurting the spring that's the best way to take care of your springs man that's a that's a big function of a 1911 so now I'm gonna put it back on same thing clockwise it expands it so it's clockwise take it off clockwise put it on it's not like a thread of, you know on a screw so there it is so we'll lay that aside now that that's our first spring it's done no problem with that that one's done that was easy so the next one uh, let's go ahead and do the magazine spring next this one is a little tricky if you've never done one of these it, they are a little bit tricky they're not super hard but if you don't know what you're doing it, it could be that's the push button itself it has a small little locking pin that's got a 90 degree thing like a bolt action on a rifle kind of uh, actually four piece and you got the back side here too so uh, if you put your screwdriver in that little bitty little bitty screw slot there and just go to turning nothing's gonna happen because to make it work right you have to push in on the mag release button so you push in about halfway on it get this where it started out and then you can turn that once you feel, get to the right spot it'll turn okay once you get it turned exactly to the right place you'll feel it turn then it captures it okay once it's captured it'll stay out like that then it becomes loose okay and I'll show you that when we get it out all right so now when you look at this I have to zoom in let me zoom in on this one because this gets real real tedious okay on this one what I was saying was if you look inside here right here there's it's kind of hard to see on the camera but there's a little bitty like a like a bolt action rifle it's a little bitty tab of steel and there's a slot cut right there so all we do is we're going to take this screw and we're going to turn it to the right let me get in the slot some of this stuff is so easy to do but when you video it it's different so push in a little bit turn it and then let it come out slow okay so now let me make sure you can see this all right we're still in frame let's move it this direction just a little bit okay and there you can see what we've got on the side of this i'm gonna pull the spring out of the picture can't get that wrong it's it's uh, made up good on both sides let's get this out of the picture put it on the tray this one has if you look at this real close it has a little tab right there i'm gonna leave these parts laid out as they go and if you look at this it's got that tab is going to go in and you push it to a certain point and then the tab will turn here like i say it's just like a bolt action rifle the bolt goes in you get to a certain point on a rifle and the bolt turns down it's exactly the same setup as that on this little mag release so let's get our new spring our new spring is over here made by wolf see if we can put this together without blowing anything up or shooting it across the room put that in the hole right there now this part is tedious you have to watch out what you're doing I like to keep my hand in front of it I'm gonna check real quick on the camera see if I'm still good still good on the camera move this way just a little bit okay so you keep your hand in front of it get on that make sure that the little tab is lined up make sure your screwdriver is lined up and start to go in once you get lined up with the slot then you turn it counterclockwise when you get it there you can stop you can let go you're done you've got that it's captured it's in there nothing can go wrong at that point now it's very good to look at this and realize you turned counterclockwise to lock that tab in place with spring tension on it so the spring is in there which means when you put this in the gun you're going to have to push the button a little bit just like when you took it out and you've got to turn clockwise to release it so that it stays in the gun and functions properly so now i'm going to expand this back out remember clockwise is going to release your spring 
And if you see this and know this, it's, man, it makes, makes life a lot easier. Otherwise, you're shooting in the dark and guessing, and you don't want to do that when you're gunsmithing. So we put this in. You can tell how it goes. There's no way to get that wrong. Put that in there like that. It's in now, okay? And then we got to have our finger on the other side to operate this. So put the finger there. Give it the finger. And uh, get in your slot for that. Make sure you're in the slot. Unlike me. Okay, now I'm in the slot. Then you push up on it a little bit. Get to the right place. That will turn. See, I turn clockwise, then you let go. All right, then make sure it'll function, okay? Now we can test our work and see if we accomplished anything good. Here's the first test. Empty mag. Put it in there and see how hard it is to get over that new spring. I can already tell that's about half what the other one was. That's a lot, lot easier, okay? Then we push the button, see if we have to stand on it. Hey, guess what? We don't have to stand on it now. Look at that. It comes out nice and smooth. Now, if this had some pressure on it from being up in there, it would really pop out good, but right now it's not put together all the way. But you can see, watch, I'll pull on it, put a little pressure, pull, and it's very easy, okay? So that's a valid test. Pull in just a little bit, push the button, barely push, and it comes out easy. So that's a big improvement. That made that a lot easier. Now, it will, like I say, it won't pop out now because there's nothing, the slide's not on the gun. So don't, don't beat me up too bad. If I push that down and play like slides there, watch what happens. Boom, it comes right out. So that is a much nicer spring. My wife will like that. That will mean when she picks up my GI gun, she'll go, oh, that thing is nice. Boy, that thing is, that thing is slick. That thing is nice. That's what you want. You want your wife to be able to pick up your gun, and hopefully she's not uh, chasing you with it, and uh, go out and do a little target practice, and everything smoother, nicer. So we've got two springs done. Which ones? We got the recoil spring done. It is now a 14 pound variable rate recoil made by Wolf Corporation. We have a magazine spring, magazine release spring right here that has been replaced. And they sell these, Wolf sells these in a package. I think there's a variable package. Mine was a one, two, three, four. I believe it's a number two. It's a mid band, but it is definitely reduced over government. This company goes way above government. They just do. All their springs are a lot heavier duty than what even John Moses Browning had had in mind. And they're, they're trying to make it last longer or something. I don't know. But they, they're real heavy. And uh, you get on a 1911 forum, talk to people about the TSOS, they'll all say the same thing. Springs are oversprung, too heavy. So now that's fixed and the recoil spring's fixed. More to my liking. Say, so what's next? The next one is up inside here. We got to get up in there. It is a tough bad boy. It is a tough, look at that spring. Man, that's a squatty body. It's small diameter. You can see that the coils themselves are very large diameter for that size spring. That is a serious spring. The one that's supposed to be in there from the factory for a GI gun should be 23 pounds. This one's about a 30. The one I'm putting in is a, not a 24, I'm putting in an 18. It's reduced. Remember, the reason you can use a reduced spring on these is because the striker in these now is smaller diameter and it's titanium so it flies a lot easier. The other spring we're going to replace is the one that deals with the trigger. So, we can do that when we get this off, we'll do both at the same time. Let's start off with getting this apart all right step number one very first step let that hammer go down and when you do that uh ride it with something don't let it slam into the frame you don't want to do that so ride it with your finger and uh pull it real careful and just let it go down nice and gentle what that does by putting your hammer forward is that takes the pressure off your mainspring housing the next thing i like to do is get you a little book like this something you can work with put it like that just a soft little notebook lay your gun like that make sure you can see it good put this right out here i have to check my camera make sure everything's kosher on it so y'all can see it good 
I'm going to zoom in just a little bit on this so you can see what I'm doing. I want to zoom in just a little bit on the pen so you can see this detail. They say the devil's in the details, but I, I don't like to use that term. I think it's just the opposite of that. I think the Lord's in the details. So here we go with details. So you need a nice tool for this job. I went on Amazon and I ordered this tool right here. This is the tool you need for this job. This is a punch and it is a small punch. I bought the smallest one because we're going to use this for something else inside there. This punch is a 1 16th. So uh, I've bent it a few times. You can bend it back. But anyway, that's a 1 16th punch. Now on these guns, I know it's hard on the video to see this, but there is a pin right here. Now this pin, I'm going to put the end of my punch on it, is hollow on one side. John Moses Brown, he is a genius. And on the other side, the pin is round-headed, polished round-head pin. It kind of gives you a clue which way you need to go. So we're going to take the punch, put it in that little hollow part of the pin, and drive it out with my big hammer. This is where you get to laugh at me. Here's my big hammer. When you get, get a hammer like this, always make sure you turn it where your opening is, uh, is on the hammer side. Just a, a few good taps. I want you to see how easy this comes out. It's not hard. See that? It's already almost all the way out. And this is not one of those that things fly across the room, so you don't have to worry about that. Hopefully you can see this good. I'll make it where you can see it. Just a few more taps, and that should come out. Hold it like this. Now let me turn this around. I'm going to turn the whole picture around so you can see on your side. I am not left-handed, but I can definitely do this for y'all. Put it like that. And like that, and out she comes, okay? So there's the pin out. Now I want you to know something about this pin. This is kind of cool stuff to know. This pin, like I said before, is hollow on one side. That's the driving side. So there, there's your pin, but notice it has a little machine cut right there in the middle of it. And you'll see why. Just remember that little machine cut, little valley in the center of that pin. The purpose of that is the tail inside here, there's a piece that goes inside here, the tail of it is pointed. And you'll see that in a minute. That pointed tail in this assembly will ride against that and that helps that pin stay centered up in the gun. It keeps it from falling out. So the next step <clears throat> is go ahead and pull this mainspring. Look at this, they even give us a nice handle. To so pull this mainspring out, that's a mainspring housing. So we've got that out now. Pull it out loose from the gun, we'll set the gun aside. Okay? So now we gotta get in there and get that bad boy, that tough one to get out. Let's see how we do this. It looks like a, a puzzle, mystery puzzle. If you look at it, I'm gonna have to zoom in on this. So I'm gonna leave my pointer right there. We'll zoom in. Okay, that is a tight fit in the picture, but we're gonna make this work. So, if you look at this very closely, right there is a little bitty hole, all right, where that is, and turn it over on the other side. There is a little bitty pin. These, this pin has a flat head on it. They've machined it out very carefully where when you put that pin in all the way, that flat head lets that sit flush. So when you put that in the gun, Put that in the back end of the gun. John Moses Browning, I'm telling you, that guy was a genius and a half. When you put that in there like that and get it all up inside the gun, it's captured in such a way that, that uh, there's no way that that pin can back out. So we gotta get it out of there. Now here's the cool part. When you drive that pin out, you can leave your pin punch in place to keep parts from flying. Now watch this carefully. Let me use my little book. And we're going to drive that bad boy out. Let's put him like that right there. Use my little book. We're going to drive him out. Let's see if we can... I'll turn this around. i got to keep turning, turning, turning. I'm not left-handed, but we'll do it this way so that you can see something. All right. 
like that. Well, try this stuff left-handed, boy, that's a lot of fun. So when I drive this through, this pin is gonna come out and the pin punch is gonna hold that mainspring housing in place. Hopefully it won't shoot across the room. All right, there we go. We have success. Now let's look at this, got a little shadow here, get the shadow out of the way. This is the smallest part of your 1911 gun, as far as I know, is that little bitty pin right there. Now, so how do you keep that from shooting across the room? Because I'm bad about shooting stuff across the room. I'm gonna tell you right now, the only thing that's holding that mainspring in there is that punch. See that? Let's see if that's showing up on video good. All right, we're looking good. So here's how I do it. This is me. Lay the little pin off to the side. This is a surgery pad. My surgery pad is my paper towels. It helps me see my parts, so I get it out of the picture. You don't get to see it right now. He's gonna rest over there, okay? So the way I do it is I know which way that spring's gonna shoot out. It's gonna shoot out of that hole coming out this way. So I turn this facing down like that, and I hang on to this, get a good grip on it. Let's see, I'll turn it this way so you can watch it. Here we go, left-handed again. So I capture that with my big claw fingers here, turn my hydraulic gripper on, clamp, and it's gripped, and then I pull that punch out. Watch this. Do you hear that snap? All right, now let the spring pressure off very slowly and lay it over. All right, watch what's inside this little package right here. There should be three pieces total. Give it a little shake. There's, uh, I'll keep them together. Try to keep it all together so you can see it. And look at that, I kept it all together, all right? So here's your main spring housing, it's a hollow tube. You can see the little pin goes right there. I'm gonna put the pin back where he goes so we don't lose him. Those are famous for getting lost and then your whole project's down over that pin. You're not gonna find that pin at Walmart or at Lowe's. So here's what we've got. We've got a pointed end. Remember I told you that pin that's got the little V cut in it? That little pointed end is what's gonna ride right there. So you gotta put this together going the right way. That's what holds that pin in place. So let's take this apart slowly, very slowly. I love the simplicity of this. That one is got a T-shape, got a cup on the top. This one is a pointed shape like that. The spring is the same on either end so you can't get it wrong. So we're gonna take that spring, that's the way too heavy spring, take him out of the picture drop him way over there and bring in the new wolf reduced spring. See that right there? That is the nice lightweight, that is an 18 pound spring from Wolf, Wolf Corporation. W-O-L-F and add another F, two Fs. So we slide that inside that, slide this inside this like that. So that looks so easy, I'm telling you, if you make one mistake on this, you don't take note of what I'm doing. These things can swarm on you and shoot pieces across the room. And then uh, you have you and your dog and your cat and your wife and your rabbit and all the children looking for one little piece to keep the thing going again. And it's very aggravating. You don't want to do that. So here we go. Let's see if we can put this together. Let me get my little pin out of there. All right, little pin. Little pin likes being home. So we get him out. So there him is. Let's see if I can do this on a video. Wow, this will be a lot of fun. So what I do, this is me doing it. I put that little pin in there, just on the edge of the lip, okay, like that. Now this one, you may not be able to see it, but you know, you'll be able to see enough of it to know what's going on. We want the pointed end, like that, to go down inside first. So the pointer is going to point the direction you want to go, which is down inside the hole in the mainspring housing. So we're gonna push it in there and you're gonna to get to right there and everything's gonna stop, okay? This is the part where it gets tricky. Uh, I like to have something to hold that for the video. So what we'll do, you do not have to have this, but this is what I do. Put me a block of wood a block of wood right there 
this happens to be a piece of three quarter inch oak let's see which way it goes the best let's put it like that where it's flat on that end that'll be fine okay check our video and we're going to expand this out a little bit okay you can see what I've got there I've got I have the mainspring housing mainspring housing I have my punch what we're going to do is I'll review this with you we've got the little bitty pin that's going to hold this whole apparatus together that's our locking pin We've got the spring in here, we've got the pointer on the other end of it, and we've got this flat one with the cup in it. Our goal is to push that whole apparatus inside the mainspring housing and capture it. So, you don't want to go pushing like this because it's going to just go all over the place. You could put this in a vise if you wanted to. Uh, not scratch it up, but I like to just put a block of oak right there. This is going to try to do something dumb on me. So I use this thumb right here is going to seat that pin, but I've got to get past it first. So here's what we're going to do. Put my plunger right there. I hope you can see some of this. Let's see. Maybe I can turn. I'm going to turn this whole thing. That's what we'll do. We'll turn it. We'll turn it sideways. Put it at an angle, oblique angle like that. I want you to see the details on this. All right, we'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. Hopefully this will work. Okay, now then, we're gonna push this in. This is where you use smart muscles. Push it in, feel for it, wiggle it, and push and push and push. There we go, got it. See, it tried to misbehave because I was on video, but I got it. Had to push a little harder. You've got to get past enough that you can get that pin in there. Once that pin goes in, now you have a mainspring housing. That's ready to go. Mainspring housing resprung with lighter spring. That's a lot easier to do that than it is with the spring that was in it. Now, the last step is we got to change out our spring for the trigger. And that's this guy right here. So to change it out, we've got to get the old one out of the gun. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And it really does, but it won't be too bad. Let's get the gun up here like this. We be able to, we've got to be able to get this part out. So what we do on that is leave that hammer to the rear and we take this thumb safety it's in the down position, which is safety off, there's safety on. We gotta get between those two positions, between the two, and start pulling on it. So, we get it right between the two and start. Okay, there we go, finally. That one comes out. Lay him aside. We'll lay all these parts aside. And we can take out the grip safety. So the grip safety's out of the picture now. And you can leave all these pins in. You don't need to take the hammer out. You don't need to take the sear out or the disconnector. You can leave it all in place. Here's what we're after right here. We're after that little spring. So get that hammer out of the way. And get that little spring out right there. Watch him come out. That's a black one, boy. It's almost uh, camouflage. See? There him is. So this is the factory one. We want to lay it aside, get it out of the picture. I always like to get the stuff I'm taking out way out of the picture so I don't accidentally put the same piece right back in. I know nobody here has ever done that, but I've done it plenty of times. So now let's expand out. This will need a little bit more room to make this work. This next step is not too hard, but it's a little bit detailed. You need to have that hammer up forward, so get that up forward like that. You want this strut to be up out of your way, so get him up like that. And then you want to lay this new spring. This was the one for your trigger. 
This does your guard, your, uh, excuse me, your hand safety, grip safety. It does the grip safety on this side and the other two do the trigger. So we're going to lay that in there like that. And it has a slot right there in your frame. I'm going to point that out to you. It has a slot right there in the frame. There's your slot. And this has a tab of metal on the bottom of it that fits in that slot. So all you do, make sure that this lays flat because this is going to ride your, your disconnector, your sear, and all those parts that are the main trigger parts. This is going to lay right on them because it's what operates them. So you have to kind of lay that up in there gently. Lay this in there gently. It'll try to slide and fly all over the place on you. And once you get it in there right, that'll fall down the slot, okay? So you get that in the slot, make sure it's sitting up on top of the pieces. And that's gonna be extra stupid today because we're making a video. All right, there we go. That will give you a little bit of a fit. So there you go, it's in there and it's laying on top of the pieces, okay? Now to capture that like that, you grab up your main spring housing right here. It's got male fins on it. They go into female slots. Get that lined up. And then slowly go up on there until it captures that spring, okay? You don't want to go too far. See, there's plenty of room to pin it right there, but you've got to leave yourself enough room to get your grip safety back in place. So, the thing that you gotta do first before you can do that is you have to get this tailpiece coming down. So the tailpiece goes down, so where is it gonna go? Well, if you remember on this mainspring housing, it has a cup right there, this little hole. That's what your spring is located inside there on that little cup. So that tailpiece has got to go in that cup. It's not hard to do. I like to just grab it with something, a little pointer or something like that, a little tweaker, a small screwdriver, and kind of get it started, you know, keep sliding it up, sliding it up, slide up your mainspring housing until it's starting to, you can stand it up like that, get gravity work to work with you a little bit. Uh, like I say, so many of these things on a video are twice as hard as when you're doing it in real life because you want to have everybody see what you're doing. So now you double check that. Make sure that that long strut is inside the cup. And I did that by holding it in place and then bringing this up and you can see we're almost there. So the next step is to be able to get this grip safety in there. See if I can do that where you can see it good. I may have got it too tight. That's another thing you gotta watch out for. You'll see that here in a minute. So we go in there like that. Hey, I did not. I left just enough room to get it in there. So then we're going to put the pin that holds that, that is your thumb safety. Get that in there like that. So it's pinned now, okay? Usually when I get that pinned at that point right there, I stop everything. I want that captured where it can't get away. So I make sure my safety's down. And then I pick up my pin that I'm gonna drive in there, which is right here. I look for the round end, cause I wanna stab that in that hole. Stab the round end in that hole. And then I stand up the whole rig, get my big hammer right here. This is my favorite hammer. You can use any hammer you want. And I set that down on that ring and I push. Push hard, give it a little tap. Once I get that halfway in there, it's captured. There's no way it can get away. I don't even worry about that till the end of the whole process. Next, next project, I pull that hammer to the rear, get it cocked. And then I start feeling for that to be a halfway point. When it gets to halfway point, it will slide right in there. Now, sometimes you have to help it a little bit on this little plunger. Get him like that, and look at that. Boom! Now you check it, make sure it feels normal. Let your hammer down gently, which I did. And then the last step, go ahead and put that pin in. So on the pin, we get out our notebook again so we don't poke a hole in the table. I take my punch right there in the hollow side of the pin, like that, and my big fancy hammer. They don't sell these at all the stores, but this is the one I use. And you will go real soft on the last couple of taps, and you can see that's not quite all the way down. 
So we're going to give it one more little tap and it went all the way down. So when it's perfect, it'll be sticking out on this side just a little skosh and it will be flush right there when you feel it and you'll see. And the way it did that, like I said before, the piece on the mainspring has that point like a Christmas tree point on the end of it like an arrow and that's going to saddle up in the machined out cut, little valley in that pin. And when it locks in the middle of that, that holds that pin in place. John Moses Browning thought of that. He's a genius. So the last step is we can put the gun back together. So let's review what we've got. We've got a new mainspring housing pin. We've got a new spring that's in charge of the triggers. We have a new recoil spring in here. And then we have a new spring right in here that's for the magazine. So let's put the gun back together. This is easy to do, no problem. We will set this spring. Let's go ahead and run our recoil spring, our brand new 14 pound recoil spring, run it through there. There's the spring guide rod where it goes. Got the little drop link. And let's have a slide. Slide going onto a frame. Put the frame like that. Everybody going on good. Pull the hammer to the rear, make everything work a little smoother and get our half moon lined up where it goes. I always move this back and forth, make sure I can see the barrel link hanging down. I pin it, as soon as I can see it, I pin it for sure, sure, sure. And then I like to pull this out and make sure I actually got the barrel and I did. And then half moon, get our half moon. And we'll put that right there and go straight in so that you don't make the old uh, idiot mark across your, across your slide, you don't wanna do that. Then we will put this, put this nice little cap on the end to hold the recoil spring down. I can already tell you that's a lot softer than the other one was. Get it captured. Okay. Now let's let's try this out. First step, let's do our magazine. We did it before, but now we're gonna do it with a slide on the top. See if it's a little easier. Oh yeah, that's a lot, lot better. So now our magazine goes in easier, locks easy. And when we push the button, it comes out a lot easier. So, pass that step. Next step is, how does it feel to cycle the slide? Let's try that. Oh man, so much easier. 14 pound recoil spring instead of a 22 or 24. How does it feel to cock the hammer? Let's try that, hammer cock. Oh boy, that's a lot easier. Now, let's check it for hammer follow, make sure the hammer's not following. We pull the trigger, pull the trigger. Keep the trigger pulled, cycle the slide, let the slide go forward and the hammer stay to the rear, so that's good. Now let's check out that, check out that trigger pull. Let's see if it went from eight pounds, seven and a half, eight pounds. And now, oh, I bet you I get a trigger scale and prove that. Let's do that, let's get a trigger scale and we will prove what that weight is. My trigger scale looks like something you'd weigh a crappie with that's because that's uh, kind of what it is, but it is RCBS, which is a gun company. So let's give this a go here. I'll try to turn this sideways. I think that's legit. Let's turn him like this. Lay him over on his side so he can rest. Let's make sure that is in the picture like that. That's a long draw, so we'll zoom out. Make sure we're zoomed out. Out, out, out. Look at that. Okay. Now we'll see if we can get a number here. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Maybe you can see the number. Let's see what we got here. So on this, we got to make sure safety's off. Got to make sure our grip safety is made and make sure the tongue of that's not dragging anything. And we'll try this, see what it breaks at. Okay, I saw, I saw about a 48. Let's try that again. I'm gonna do it two or three times. You might be able to zoom in on your side. Let's see here. I'll just read them off to you. 16, 24, 32, 40. Uh-oh, I am not touching right. Okay, that's a little bit more. Try again. 
I like to do several, make sure that's not touching anything. Okay, so somewhere between, that's about 56 it looked like on the high end. Let's do it one more time. I like to do several of these, get a good average. Okay, 48, it's dropping between 48 and 56. One more. Make sure my scale's good. Okay, I'm gonna call that 50, because that's what I'm seeing more than any, is around 50. Let's do the math on that. See if that comes out to approximate. This is not exact, okay? But I'm seeing 50 ounces. We take 50 and divide by 16 ounces per pound. And there's what we got right there. I'm seeing 3.125. So say, so, well, a couple times it went up above that. Yeah, so it's about three and a quarter to three and a half pounds. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Three and a half pound trigger on a carry gun or a farm gun. I'm very happy with that. So we'll try that again. That is a very nice, and the take up on it, I like that too. The take up is, is uh, well, you know what? We can weigh that. We can weigh that. I just thought of that. We can weigh that take up. I've never weighed that on a gun. Let's see if we can weigh the take up. If, is there such a thing? Let's see if I can feel it. I have to kind of feel for it and then stop. I don't know if, I don't think you can do that. Maybe I can, we'll see, okay. Yeah, maybe I can. When I see it move, okay, that's a little over a pound. I can, I can do that and see it move. If you're good with your eyeballs, you can see it move right at a pound, just over a pound. So about a pound, pound and a quarter, you can see the take up, so that's pretty cool. So there's our take up, about a pound and a quarter. You've gotta have at least a pound minimum or your trigger won't reset. After you fire it, you want, and let your finger off, you want that trigger to come back forward. So that's critical. This trigger is basically a two-stage trigger. You've got the initial take up, which is your trigger reset. That's the poundage needed to let it reset when you finish firing. You've got that pound, pound and a quarter, and then you've got another two pounds or so, two and a half, to make up a three and a half pound trigger. So if it's one and a half pounds, then you got two more pounds after that, makes a total of three and a half, three and a quarter to three and a half. And that's a good, that's a good safe trigger. That's not a target trigger, but a lot of your uh, combat shooters, a lot of people that carry a EDC, that's about where they want their trigger. Now, if it's eight pounds, that's gonna be rough, man. It's, it's rough to shoot, target shoot with an eight pound trigger because just about the time you get your sights on, your grip is perfect, everything two thumbs forward, you double check everything, you get your sights lined up perfect, you start looking at them and you say, boy, that's perfect. And then you make your pull and you will pull that gun off. Your trigger will be so heavy, it'll make you pull the gun. As you're gripping your trigger finger, it makes you grip your other. It's called sympathetic, sympathetic reflex. And these other fingers will grip a little and you'll, if you're a right-handed shooter, you'll shoot low left. That means your trigger is too heavy for target work. You can get around that. Once you learn how to master this out of the grip here for combat purposes, make sure you can hit the center of a, at least a man-sized target. You can do that with a heavy trigger. But when you get into precision work where you're trying to shoot playing cards and hit the heart at seven yards, hitting one of the hearts on the two of hearts, you gotta be able to have a light, crisp trigger to be able to do that work because you got to be able to make that trigger finger be the only thing that moves. 70% of your brain needs to be on that trigger finger. 30% of your brain needs to be on your side alignment. That will happen almost automatically. Once you get used to that trigger, do your work on the trigger, 70-80% on the trigger, other percent left over your brain without daydreaming should be sight alignment and you can hit. So already this gun, right out of the box, I've shot it a, a few times to get, you know, so-called broke in. But break in on these sometimes can be uh, some sandpaper too. Get you some nice, uh, let's see what I use. I use a 1600 grit. I think I've got some laying here. Let me show you what I use. This is a very good thing to break these in with. 
Oh, mine's a 1200, 1200 grit. So you can take some of this 1200 grit. Well, that thing got dusty on me. 1200 grit sandpaper. Use some of that, and uh, you're not going to hurt this gun with that. So your disconnector inside there, sometimes it's a little rough. You can polish it. You can polish the tips on the uh, on your plunger tube right here if they're a little bit rough. You can polish the tip on this uh, slide stop where it goes in there. Sometimes it doesn't want to let that piece get in there. You know, it doesn't want to let you get out of the gun. You can uh, polish that. This one is smooth. It's in good shape. I didn't have any. Don't don't get into your trigger parts and start polishing them. There's no need to do that. But uh, your rails, you can polish them a little bit if it's a little bit rough. But one of the easiest ways you can make one of these guns be broke in is take it apart, take all the your recoil spring out and just mount your slide to your frame and cycle that back and forth many times. Just cycle it, cycle it, cycle it. Watch you a movie, get you a two hour, three hour movie and just cycle the gun. You know, just cycle it just with the slide on the frame. You can do it that way. Another thing you can do, this is a trick of the trade that I learned from a gunsmith years ago. If your trigger feels like it's got just a little touch of grit in it, when you go to break it right before it breaks, you feel a little gritty something. It's not a clean break. It feels gritty. feels like there's a little burr. You can get rid of that without even taking that gun apart. All you do is you take that hammer and lift up on the hammer. Put a lot of pressure on the hammer. Lifting up. Make sure the gun's empty. Lift up on the hammer. Put about 5-10 pounds of lift up pressure on it. And then pull the trigger. And what that does is that makes those two surfaces of the hammer and the sear, the sear's the knife edge, the hammer's got a little, got little hooks cut in it, it will make that kind of take those edges off a little bit. Now, it'll do the same thing over shooting it a few thousand times, but this is just a quick way to get rid of that little grip. You only have to do it about five or six times. This one doesn't really have any. T-Sauce does a great job on this pistol. The pistol you see laying here let me get a beautiful holster to hold it up. One of our beautiful holsters that was made by 1791. Yes, I represent them. Yes, they are my company, 1791. This holster holds that up. That is a beautiful gun right there, and that is built by T-Sauce. T-Sauce out of uh, Turkey. But those people in Turkey, I'm telling you, they have worked with our GI guys, our veterans, they have worked with some of those veterans that are located in Alabama and uh, they've done a great job. They've done a great job with them. So, over and out for now. Wow, I ran out of battery. <laughs>